Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Papa's Place. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, today, it just ain't been doing nothing but doing a whole lot of raining, and I done got bored. So I decided I'm going to look and see what kind of scraps I can come up with and see if I can build me a quail plucker. So what I got, which this is a new bucket, but I already had it, just a five gallon bucket. I had some of this aluminum plate and I went on and cut the circle out. That's gonna be my plate for the bottom of the plucker. I had already purchased some of these plucker fingers so right now, the only investment I got for this plucker is this, because I had to book it for other purposes anyway. And I got these off Amazon, which like I said, I already had these. I got a metal pipe here, three-quarter pipe, which is a thick wall pipe in the scrap pile. That's what I'm going to use for my shaft. I had an old pulley here off of something other, and this three quarter, so the shaft gets right in it. Already had an old belt. Don't have no clue what that was off of. It was hanging on the wall. Then I got another little pulley right here, which is an idler pulley. And what I'm going to do to that, to have the motor to run this thing, I got one of these, they call a Troy Built Jump Start. Now, I don't own nothing Troy Built, and don't know where I come across this at, but it's a pretty stout little motor. And I'm going to take this pulley and tack weld on this Troy Built Jump Start. At least that's my plans at the beginning here, and that's going to be my motor. Now the framework I'm just gonna build out of just wood. But this ain't gonna be a step by step building video. And it ain't gonna all get done today cause I'm gonna have to get, the only thing I'm gonna have to purchase right now that I know is two pillow blocks. So where my shaft runs through my stand, I'm gonna need two pillow blocks and I'm gonna have to order them. But I'm just going to start this today, and I wanted to start this video showing y'all what I'm starting with. It's just stuff I already had laying around. Like I said, if this works to my plan, all I'm going to have invested in this is the plucker fingers and the pillow blocks. And I know that ain't going to be, I'll look it up, but I know the pillow blocks is about $25 for two pillow blocks. I can't remember what these were, but they wasn't too terribly much. $15, $20 at the tops. And a quail plucker machine, I don't know if y'all looked at them, but even one of the cheap ones is $300 plus shipping. So, I'm going to build this. Like I said, I ain't going to do a video of me building it because this is just my scrap stuff. But I'm showing you what I'm going to start with. And then after I get it built, I'll show y'all how it works and a close-up of it. And so you'll have an idea of what I started with and what I'm gonna end up, what I'm gonna end up with. I hope it works. I ain't got nothing else to do, so I ain't wasting time, I don't guess. First, I'm gonna start out with my bucket, drilling my holes and putting my fingers in. And then I'll go from there. All right, guys. At this point, I got my plate made, my holes drilled in it. Started pulling some of my fingers in it just so I could adjust my height on my bucket. Got my shelf. I had to weld a little washer or a big washer on top of this pipe shaft and drilled holes and put four little bolts in there. And that's how my plates fastened to my shaft. And then I drilled the holes in my bucket everywhere I needed them. Now I ain't cut my chute in my bucket for my feather drain yet. But in the midst of this, I'm making a plan change. Instead of using this Troy built jump start, since that's just a rechargeable deal, I said by the time I go through this trouble, then this thing will quit on me or something. I have a 
motor here off of an A horsepower motor, a garage door opener. And the motor, I took it apart and it works just fine. So I wear a switch in it. And the shaft right here is a half inch shaft and I can put me a pulley, get me a one inch pulley with a half inch, fit a half inch shaft and put that on there. I got my wood frame started here, but I'm as far as I can go cause I gotta have my pulley blocks to go up under here from my shaft and to put this big pulley on and that'll be my shaft bucket to set on that end and then I can use this motor and I had to change my length here to fit my belt once I get my pulleys up and fasten that motor on right there so that's where we at today and that's as far as I'm gonna go until I get my pulley blocks in and my one inch pulley for this then I'll continue on but I can't put my fingers in my bucket yet until I put my shaft through, get it the length I need it, and cut it, because you can't put the plate through the bucket with the fingers in it. You gotta get all that on down here first before you can put the fingers on. All right, guys, this is several days later, and you see I got my frame painted while I was waiting on my pillow blocks to come in. But when I've got my first pillow box in, I made a mistake the other day when I told y'all the shaft I was making this out of was a heavy wall three quarter inch pipe. I just assumed that was three quarter inches, and when I ordered my pillow blocks, they come in and they wouldn't fit. This heavy thick wall pipe right here is actually a seven eighths inch, so I had to reorder. And that was my fault for not paying attention. I just assumed that was three quarter inches. So today I'm going to be finishing assembling this and I'm going to put my pillow blocks on, get it totally finished, assembled, and then I'll go over this with y'all. Like I said, I'm not showing you a step-by-step -step video here on how to build it, simply because if you build this, you may come up with different pulleys and stuff, but at the end I'm going to tell you how many RPMs this motor turns, my pulley conversion, and it'll be approximately how many RPMs this thing's turning. Show you up close of how it's put together. So right now, I'm finna start assembling it. And we may just let y'all watch for a little bit, but like I said, I ain't gonna get up here and get a step-by-step. -step. Two pillow blocks, one under each bracket. These pillow blocks, guys, come with little grease zerts in the pack. So you can grease these bearings, which is a good thing. It's time to pull all these little pucker fingers into this bucket. Alright guys, I got the fingers in there. If I counted them right, there's 51 pluckers in the bucket. 
Can't quite remember how many is in the bottom, but I know I bought two packs of 50 and that was enough to do it. So, so now it's time to go in with the bucket. guys we got her finished now I did finish it yesterday but when I got done with it it was raining so hard you couldn't hear nothing out in this building so I just decided to wait till this morning to show y'all the finished product so I'm gonna get the camera up here and just walk around close and show y'all how it's done and then I'm gonna set it down on the floor because one thing I did at the end I put another piece of two before on the bottom which I ain't painted and a strap right here. And the reason I put this strap in that two before on the bottom, because this thing does weigh a little bit. And I can take my dolly when it's sitting on the floor and run up under it and put this around my dolly and tilt it back and roll it outside when I need to use it. Ain't got to do no picking up. And I'm going to get my camera, show y'all up close. And the RPMs, the best I can come up with is this is a half horsepower, 1500 RPM motor. This is a 10 inch pulley. And if I said 11 inch somewhere in the beginning of the video, it's a 10 inch pulley. So for my conversion that I done on the apps on the computer, this should be running somewhere around 200 RPMs, maybe, maybe like 205, 206, something like that. I can't remember exactly. So I, I'm hoping that's fast enough. I know on a chicken plucker, they say somewhere up there close to 300 RPMs, but I'm thinking a quail plucker. I could never find no, no true specs on what they say the RPMs are on them, and I'm thinking it's running around 200 RPMs. You overtake her. What I did here, I took a plastic, just an old tooth top, and basically put it under my bucket, shaped it, which I'm going to heat that and have it where to stay bent down. Heat that with a heat gun. Because you got to shoot in your bucket here, as y'all see up close here in a minute. But when you put your quail in there plucking it, you're going to be spraying water in it. And that's where your feathers will come out. And I just done this so to get them further away from the pulley and the belt. Plus, if you want to set a tub or something under here to catch them, you can catch your feathers. But I think it come out pretty good myself. Back here on the back, I put a little... Redneck and engineer in here where I could wrap my cord around and it would stay wrapped up. I got a cord here about 20 foot that came off an old pressure washer. What I like about it, it's got the GLI breaker on the plug already. So that makes it a little safer since you're going to be using some water. And I know some of you are going to say, well, you got that switch facing straight up. Well, I got a plan for that. I got another old top here, so when I am plucking quail, I'm gonna lay that top right up there like that. That way it just won't get no water splashing or feathers or anything splashing and coming out. Kind of help keep the motor clean. Like I said, I ain't giving no measurements or nothing because what's the odds of somebody else having a old 
garage door opener motor just like that and the same pulley setup I got. I'm just showing y'all what I built. Right here where I cut the chute in the bucket. And guys, if you order these quail plucker fingers, they actually got a paper in them that kind of give you a little detail on how far to space them apart in the package with them. Y'all can see right up under where I put a pillar block bearing under the bottom. Come on down, get one under the bottom down there. Now my shaft here is still sticking through and I thought about cutting it off. And then I said, no, I'm going to leave that long. Because who knows, if my motor goes out, and the way I am, if I come across some other kind of motor, it may be a motor that sticks way down and I need to put the pulley on the bottom. So I'm going to just leave my shaft running wild. Here's how I got or just little rubber fingers there to wrap my cord up around. Like I said, I ended up putting this on there at the last minute so I can use my dolly to pick it up. And the motor, I just wired a light switch in right there on the top. Y'all wondering what this black thing is on this table here when I used to do taxidermy work. I built that little contraption there. You put your foot on it down here when you're splitting your deer ears open. You slide them up on there and you push it with your foot and it opens the ears up so you can put your inserts in there or you, which I didn't use inserts. I used Bondo. But anyway, just throw that in for y'all in case you're wondering what that contraption was. <laughs> but there she is. And guys, the sad part is right now I ain't got no quills. I thought about going out there. I think I got one just killing one of my breeders just to test it out. And if I do, I'll put that in the video here. But as of right now, I ain't got no quills to pluck with it. I was just getting a head start. You know, it's early in the year. The quails are just now starting to lay eggs so I can start hatching some. But I'm going to set it down here on the floor. And we're going to turn it on and let y'all see it in action. Or at least in action without a quail. <laughs> and let y'all hear this thing run. Got some pair of gloves here. I'm gonna throw in there like it's a quail. And that ain't gonna work right there with that glue because it's just going around and around. That's probably why you gotta put two quails in there so it'll make them get into them fingers and bounce around like that right there. Probably gonna have to kill one of my squirrels so I can test this out. I ain't gonna be able to wait that long. It's plucking that glue. Y'all see all that buzz coming off that glue? <laughs> if you like these little videos and you like seeing stuff like this, I know it's a lot of people starting to buy chickens and quills and rabbits and stuff for their home places, and a lot of people trying to save money and all that stuff so expensive. Maybe just help somebody out and give them an idea. And if you've built one yourself, you got a little different idea or want to tell me about it, put it down there in the comments because I'd love to see what you got and your ideas because I love hearing what other people come up with. 
might spark another different idea in my head because if this works as good as I think it is, now that I got extra pillow blocks that are misordered on this one, the three quarter inch size one, I know I got a three quarter inch solid bar shaft in here. I got some more pulleys. I come across another motor. Actually, I got a, a motor. So one day I might be building me a chicken plucker. But if you like these little videos and you haven't never subscribed, please reach down and hit that subscribe. It don't cost you a thing, but it does help me out on the YouTube algorithm. Give me a thumbs up. And the best way you can help me is to share these videos on your social media with your friends so I can get more viewers. That's the best way you can help me. But as always, I hope y'all have a great day. God bless. See y'all next time. Hey guys, I couldn't stand it. I had to kill one of them. And I done dipped it in some 160 degree hot water. Good to see what happens. I'm have to fasten my bucket down. I can see that already. Gotta remember, this is my first time. So I may not have dipped this bird long enough, but it's taking a little longer than it should. Take a look. All he's got is a few feathers right here on his wings. Right down here on his tail. And I like I said, this is my first bird. Never done this before. And I may have not have left him in the water long enough. Cause I, just, I didn't want to overdo it the first time. Guys, there's your pretty clean wheel. Y'all see that cut mark? That's where I got him with the scissors when I cut his wing off. Yeah, I'm gonna like this. You got your pretty pluck quail instead of a skint quail. <laughs>